guys, in this video, what I want to be talking about is, well, the warning signs. Not, not, not warning signs, that makes it sound as if this is a bad thing, which we all know it's not. I mean, those moments of lucidity in 3D. Those moments where you become aware that this reality possibly isn't for you and you start asking the bigger questions of life. So in this video, I'm going to be addressing the 10 signs that you are waking up. Starting with number one, the urge to move, okay? This may appear as a sort of phase, a coming of age type deal where you get to a certain point within your life where you wanna move, okay? You, you start traveling with your friends. But the difference here is you want to move on your own. You want to start traveling on your own. You don't want to be necessarily around the same kinds of people you're used to being around. And that's simply because you've all heard about the collective consciousness, right? The larger global scale of, well, this phenomena. You also have pockets of collective consciousness or better known as think tanks or think groups. Groups of people within certain towns or cities or countries that think a certain way. This is because of the ethers, a big cloud. You may not be able to see it from 3D, but there is a thought cloud within a separate dimension that is directly responsible for the thoughts of everybody within your town. You know, you could call this the culture cloud. The problem with this is it keeps you grounded into that think tank, that group of people, your neighbors, your friends, anyone within your town or city or country that think a specific way. You know, your higher self, that part of you which you may be disconnected from, thus calling it your intuition, knows that for you to become something else, for you to shed the ego and all of these characteristics, these traits which you have adopted from your parents and that you've adopted from your friends or your idols, school teachers, whoever it may be. These traits, these habits could be hindering your success when it comes to you shedding the weight, okay, the pounds. All of this nonsense we call an ego. It's nonsense for a while. At least the unconscious ego, which everyone is born into until you become aware, but that's a different, it's a different video. But the main reason why I'm stating this fact about you becoming aware and wanting to move is because the part of you, your higher self, doesn't want to be around the same types of consciousness constructs that are keeping you held down bogged down in a depressed feeling. So you want to fly. You want to get away from everyone around you and you don't want to come back. My advice here, book a holiday, challenge yourself, jump on some planes, venture out into the world on your own. And every time you do that, you come back. Not just a better version of yourself, but it's like you're going there to retrieve a part of yourself. You find parts of yourself when you start doing these missions, self-discovery journeys. It's a sign you're waking up. Number two. You'll stop laughing at your friend's jokes. Why? It's because originally they're not funny. This is this thing with consciousness. We're geared towards wanting to experience what feels good. And when we're kids, our subconscious mind tends to mimic the behaviors of the people around us that are expressing joy. So when you're seeing a kid laughing at another kid getting beaten up, if you're not careful, you could end up unconsciously laughing at others who get picked on or beaten up. It's not your problem. It doesn't mean you're evil or bad. It just means that your subconscious mind is actually working properly. 
until you beat on that person yourself. And then it doesn't feel too good. And that's because, honestly, we're not supposed to laugh at someone else's pain. You'll see this displayed a lot in movies. You know? Back to the Future is one that comes to mind. Where I think his name is Marty McFly gets beaten up and people around him are laughing. Well, when you're watching a movie, your subconscious mind will think, okay, I need to be in that situation so that I can, you know, laugh and feel good. Because, again, everyone's geared towards feeling a high vibrational frequency. Towards wanting to feel happy. So, people watch these things on TV, and then they'll practice it in real life. Only something's different. Their heart. It's not in it. I promise you, this is not a problem. Okay? Your sex drive will go... It will drop. Your sex drive will be low doesn't matter. Try not to listen to the nonsense people are going to be shouting at you because of this. Nonsense such as you may have prostate problems. Or if you find someone who's constantly aroused all of the time, because here's something a lot of guys won't say, okay? We don't like being horny all the time. I'm pretty sure females, can I make that? Uh, I can't make that assumption. I don't know, I'm not a female, but I can tell you this from a male's perspective, guys don't like being horny all the time, okay? And when they see someone else who isn't aroused, they could get annoyed because they are where they want to be. And then they'll start to project all of this hateful crap towards them. I got a few in my time. I got called a monk. I got called celibate. Oh, yeah, don't show him that photo, he's celibate. And they'll just start bickering amongst themselves, you know? But your sex drive will be low. And it's simply because of this one fact. Your awareness won't be situated within that lower half of your body anymore. You'll be more up into either your head or around about this area. Your chest or your heart. And when your headspace is within a different area of your body, we all know that when someone's headspace is below their pants, they're more privy to thinking a specific selection of thoughts mainly dealing with, well, you guessed it, sex. But we're not going to be like that, because when you wake up, you tend to leave the norm of society. You tend to start thinking upright. And I'm not saying thinking upright is better. Okay, I'm not saying that. Because all aspects of consciousness is divine. You need that part of yourself in order to procreate. It's a beautiful thing. But what I'm saying here is this. It's the control aspect of things, the influencing aspects of things. When you try to keep somebody who's unaware of these other modalities of thought down into a certain headspace, which would only benefit other people who are trying to market sex for reasons of, I don't know, maybe they're trying to sell products or maybe, you know, sex sells because obviously wherever your headspace is at, that's the reality you're going to prefer. So when you see people living in their heart and they love everyone, they're going to prefer the peace rallies rather than going to the strip clubs. It's just the way it is. And the problem is within the society is everyone pretty much their headspace is below their pants. And it may not be you. And if not, guess what? You're waking up. Here's another one. And this one relates to the last one that I just mentioned with the sex drive. You won't get sex metaphors. And if you were listening, it's because your headspace won't be below your waist. Therefore, when someone says metaphor, dealing with, I don't know, fruit or latex, lube, gel, whatever it is, you won't get it because your headspace will be somewhere else. For example, you'll be a better match to thinking about, well, someone says banana, you think smoothies. Where they may have deliberately stated that for, for the purpose of a sexual metaphor, you literally only went to health and food and dieting. And it's because of where your headspaces are at. They're in two different locations. That's a good thing. You'll stop watching TV, okay? You'll stop watching TV. I know this may seem scary when I first heard somebody say, I'm spiritual and I'm not watching TV anymore. I thought, whoa, I'm not going to give away 
my right to watch TV. But that wasn't the case. What that person actually meant was you just lose interest. Everyone here who's watching TV, who enjoys it, I got news for you. If what you're seeing on TV isn't real or is not for your growth, then you're most likely going to shy away from it simply because you're going to put your life ahead of their life, that scripted media that you're watching, whether it be on your iPhones, on your laptops, or on your computers or TVs. The reality is you're going to value your life over something that doesn't exist. So you'll be putting more time and effort into, well, becoming better, experiencing something that's real. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that gets me to my next point. Yeah, you'll become more self-focused. You'll be more interested in the things that you can do to help you achieve a certain goal, whether that be you becoming the best version of yourself, or whether that be you becoming, well, stressless, free. <laughs> and you won't care what's going on in anyone else's life because it has nothing to do with you. That's just the way it is. So you'll start prioritizing your time, not just with TV, but with other people as well. You won't be interested in the stuff that they're interested in because they're interested in that stuff just because that stuff is their life. It builds their life. That's their reality, it's their bubble. It's got nothing to do with your reality, your life or your bubble. So you'll be more self-focused. You won't stick your nose in other people's business because it's not your business and that's fine because your business is better than anyone else's business because it's tailor-made for you. And that's a good thing. Number eight, you'll begin to question everything, mainly what you think you know that has been taught to you within your past. Lessons in school, college, university, things you've heard from other people. If it doesn't match up with your experiences, it's not like you discredit it and just call it nonsense, but you're more skeptical. Yeah, that could be true, but that's someone else's history that they've experienced and not unless they could give me a way to experience what they've experienced I'm just gonna shelf it for now and then you become a truth seeker you'll start deliberately putting yourself in certain experiences just to experience well the truth and then you become more mature wise more knowing and then you can tell other people how you got there which gets me to my next point you'll drop out of crowds you'll drop out of society and you'll start to become a natural leader. Whilst you're exploring, people are gonna see you exploring, they're gonna see this pristine, perfect example of a human being, and they're gonna look up to you. And then you'll lead by example, they're gonna follow you, and they're gonna wanna know what you did in order to have these epiphanies, these moments within your life that have made you who you are. And then they're gonna start you know, embarking on the same journeys in order to discover what you've discovered. You'll stop becoming a sheep. You'll stop becoming a follower of, well, people that just aren't interesting. And you'll start to become the example that honestly, we need more of within this day and age. And that's a good thing. <laughs> Next, you'll begin to feel so connected to everything that you'll start to be able to perceive new aspects of the senses which no one else even knows about we're all taught that we have five senses which really is just one which is touch but there are so many different ways to experience the whole of reality different dimensional layers of reality that you may not be accustomed to which deal with a whole different range, variety of senses, just to experience another point of space. And when you become aware of these other places, and you start to travel to these other places, or even just feel into other places, you know, you feel like someone's standing behind you. If you could actually project, you could probably see that there is probably someone behind you. You start to feel into other locations. It deals with an extrasensory state of perception. So if you're waking up, you're probably experiencing that too. So I'm Ryan JC. This has been your potential. Subscribe for more videos like this.
comment below if, you, if you've experienced anything else which deals with your condition of waking up, or should I say your development in waking up, because condition just makes it sound like it's a problem. This by no means is a problem. I'm Ryan Jay-Z. This has been your potential. I'll speak to you guys pretty soon. Peace.